Hello everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how to cut or make wooden threads. And not just regular wooden threads, but ones that actually come out perfect. They can have so many uses for the woodworker. Traditionally, all wood screw vices were made of wooden threads. And you can do this for yourself if you can make wooden threads at home. You can do like we did and make large C-clamps. We have these deep reach C-clamps we made with our own wooden threads. And I get a lot of questions, you know, are those things really strong? And wooden threads are incredibly strong. These wooden threads are an inch and a half diameter and we are putting them on a scale here to test the strength. And a deep reach C-clamp like this is actually really economical to build and they're very handy. You can save a lot of money if you put something like this together yourself. And if you can see there, this is going up into the 500, 10, 20, 30, uh, 40, 50, 60 pounds until, so 550 or 60 pounds until this scale actually bottomed out. And I would guess a clamp like this would easily hold twice that pressure. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make the wooden threads from beginning to end. And I'm going to pretend that you don't have any dowels that you can buy and so you've got to make those yourself as well. I am also going to make them on the largest possible diameter size tool that I have. And the reason I'm doing this is because the bigger the tool, the harder it is to cut the threads. And by that I mean that as the tool gets larger, the more likely you are to have tear out in the threads. And if the threads start to tear out, then they're not going to be very strong and they're not going to be very pretty. There are a great variety of wooden thread making kits on the market today that you can purchase to make wooden threads. And they're all fairly economical, anywhere from $25 to $50 or so a piece. Uh, until you get very large in size, of course, as you get huge or enormous in size, they do get expensive. But for the most part, as woodworkers, we don't often need anything bigger than maybe an inch and a half. That's actually a pretty good size. So you can see what I've done this far is I've basically cut out a blank from uh, some 12 quarter maple that I had. And we've cut the corners off so it will turn nicely on the lathe. And we like to get the uh, ends of it started just a little bit. And then we're going to carry it over to the lathe and my daughter Sai is going to turn this down for us. And she's using the metal lathe because Maya is using the wooden lathe. So she's going to turn this down to our fixed diameter which is I think it's two and a half inches for this particular dowel size. Once that's done, I'm going to soak it in mineral oil. Now I have this container here, and this is what my Rockler T-Track was shipped in. You know, I don't know if it was the Rockler T-Track or the Craig Top Track, but a lot of those uh, aluminum tracks come shipped in these plastic tubes. And if you can uh, store, put your dowels in something like this, then it doesn't take a whole lot of oil, doesn't take a whole lot of waste. Uh, so we were able to soak these dowels completely in just about a cup or so of oil. And this is actually the secret to making this work. Uh, I see so many people who cut wooden threads and they'll wipe oil on the surface to get it lubricated or they might even soak it in oil for a few hours or a day and it just isn't enough. Here's a close up. You can see the air bubbles are actually coming out of the wood as the dowel is soaking. You want to make sure that your tube is big enough for oil to get all the way around. And you can see at this point my wooden dowel is actually floating on top of the oil. Pretty cool, I thought I'd do a little slow-mo here and you can see all of the pores of the wood are releasing air. And you can zoom in on this and see exactly what's happening. And you cannot take your dowel out of the oil until this has completed. That really depends on the size of the dowel, but these two and a half inch dowels took seven days. At the end of seven days, the dowels had sunk completely in the oil and so they were fully saturated. And that's the secret to making an absolutely perfect thread. And the nice thing is that you can actually recycle this oil and just use it again and again. You can soak dowels in it for uh, forever really. It, obviously a lot of it does get used up for the dowel but about half of it is left over for, for soaking the next dowel and so on. 
The next thing I did is to create a little clamping block with a hole drilled in it that's just slightly smaller than the diameter of the dowel and that will allow me to hold it in my vise and clamp it in securely. Okay, so the final bit of information that I have to pass on to you is to use coconut oil. The chunks of wood that come out tend to get clogged up inside of the cutter heads. If you keep the inside of this lubricated with coconut oil, which is a very thick and viscous lubricant, then that won't happen and all the big chunks will be able to move out of the way and you'll make a clean cut. If you don't do this, your cuts will end up jagged. Now you can probably see the size of the chunks that are being cut out of here. They're actually really big, but it is not shredding the wood. And most wood threading kits look something very similar to this. We have this portion here, which cuts these external threads, and this is the die. Every time I cut these, I'm amazed because it always looks like we're shredding the wood. Also, take note of how I'm doing it. I'm doing about a half of a turn and then backing up just a tiny bit to let some of those wood chunks release. Now I'll go forward again about half or three quarters of a turn and I'll back up just a little bit again. And this is the method that I want to use all the way down the, uh, the dowel here and this is gonna give us the cleanest possible cut. And you can see those threads are actually really clean. There's no jagged tear out or anything on any of the threads. So at this point we could stop here and leave a straight shanked portion at the bottom and turn it into what would look like a bolt. But I'm going to flip it around and keep cutting and try to cut all the way through the top and that way I have a full length threaded rod. You might also see those knots at the top and it's interesting to see how nicely this will cut right through those. It is quite a bit of effort when you cut a very large diameter dowel, so it's a, it's a pretty good workout. And there we go. That actually looks pretty good, considering that those are some pretty aggressive looking knots. We would have expected to see a lot more tear out there, uh, but overall this is really practically uh, what I would consider a perfect threaded rod. Now, since I've gone this far, I think I'm going to go ahead and turn one of these into a bolt. So I can have what would look like a traditional hex head bolt. I will also put links in the description below of all of the different wood threading kits that I use. And if you like our videos, we would really appreciate it if you would click that subscribe button below. And if you click that bell icon, you'll get notified whenever we release a new one. Those are a couple of things that really help our channel out, and we would really appreciate it if you took the time to do that. Thank you. Unfortunately, when I buy this lumber rough, it comes in all sorts of weird shape. It's got a cup to it, it's got some curves, some twist. Uh, different thicknesses and uh, so I've got to get it all milled down to just the right size for me to cut the nuts out of it And once I've done that I can cut it to the right width and then we're going to go ahead and trace the hexagon on the top to make that width Geometrically a hexagon is actually a very easy shape to make we're we'll go ahead and uh, Create the diameter that we want. We'll put the center of our compass at the center of our circle and that, that gives us the radius, the distance from the center to the edge. Then we'll move the point of the compass out to any point along that edge. And we'll put it into the edge there and we'll mark a point where it crosses the arc of the circle. 
And then we'll just keep moving that along each time putting the point in where it crosses the arc of the circle and we'll slowly work our way around. As it turns out, the radius of a circle happens to be one sixth of the arc length all the way around. So doing this six times uh, all the way around the perimeter of the circle gives us a perfect six sided figure or a hexagon, which is what all, uh, all nuts and bolts are shaped like. Then I'll just take a straight edge and I'll take my time and go around and mark out the perimeter of this hexagon so that I can cut it out on the chop saw. So there's a standard, it's called the ASME standard, that tells us the proportions that the head of a bolt or that the nut that fits on that bolt are supposed to be. Those proportions typically, uh, if you look at the, the bolt part itself, from corner to corner, the dimensions are typically two times the diameter of the bolt, and from flat to flat, measured across the flats, it's about 1.8 times the diameter of the bolt. And the thickness of the nut is typically about 0.8 times the diameter of the bolt. So if you were to follow those proportions, you would end up uh, creating yourself uh, a nut and bolt that actually looks to scale. We so, And I've created this one that way. The Once you can see when it's all done, it looks like an exact scaled up replica of an actual hex head bolt. So I'm going to take just a moment to sand and kind of taper off the edges of this. This is the head of our hex head bolt. And I'm just going to try to sand and taper it down a little bit to make it look a little bit more realistic like a small one actually does. And I've drilled the hole uh, just a little bit undersized for that threaded rod. And now I'm going to have to take and cut that down. I've got to cut a tenon out of it. And once again, I've got to use the metal lathe here because Maya is using the wood lathe. She's a, she's a hog. She hogs the wood lathe all day long. That's what she does. So what I did was I drilled a two inch hole inside of the head for this bolt. And so I just have to cut this down to where it's two inches in diameter exactly so it will fit nicely. And one thing we found out from working with wood and things like that a lot, it, you, typically you want to be five to ten thousandths under the size that you actually need in order to get a nice fit with glue on it. So you, if it's a two inch hole, you don't want to make it exactly two inches because it's not going to fit. And it certainly won't fit when you put glue. So for a two inch hole, we, do, we made this one ten one thousandths of an inch under, which is one one hundredth of an inch under. And then with some glue, it fit really well. In fact, we got a piston fit with the glue, so it took us a second to actually get it on. Now we have to remember that I had soaked this rod for seven days in oil, so it's still got a lot of oil on it. Now that's pretty easy to handle. If I want to glue it, I'll just take some acetone, I'll clean the surface off with acetone, and then glue it right away before any more oil can creep up from underneath. And you can see what I was talking about here as I'm trying to put this thing on. It kind of wants to just spring back up on me because there's a cushion of air. So if you just hold it down, the air will slowly escape and you'll end up with a real nice fit. And then we're just going to clamp it together for a couple of hours and then it'll be all ready to go. And that's actually starting to look like a real actual bolt. Okay, now it's time to go and make the nuts that are going to go on this bolt. They are the exact same size as the bolt head. At least that's what the ASME standards tell me. So that's how I have proceeded to make them up to this point. And here I'm just going to cut them out. Then we'll take them over and drill the holes in them. If our videos are able to help you and you are interested in supporting our channel, we would be forever grateful. We actually don't have any paid sponsors and so we are free to build whatever our viewers need help with or want to see. And we have no financial bias at all. 
You can see us at patreon.com if you like, and I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, now for this hole, this is our nut, so this hole is going to need to go all the way through. Same treatment here. We want to give this a nice soak in oil for about seven days. And I wanted to mention before I forgot that we have a community page on Facebook and it's all about woodworkers helping other woodworkers and getting advice. I also share all the best deals and discounts that I get on tools and there's lots of insider information and I'm on there about a hundred hours a month answering questions. I'll leave a link to that in the description too. Once these are done, I'll take them out, I'll dry them off, and I will go ahead and mount them in my vise. The first thing I need to do that makes the threading easier and uh, prevents tear out right at the edges is to put a nice chamfer all the way around on the inside of this hole. And then we'll just flip that over and do the exact same thing to the other side. So not only does that help with the threading, but that's actually the way all nuts are. If you look at a standard uh, quarter inch threaded nut or any size really, they all have that same look to them. Now we'll go ahead and put this back in, we'll secure it down tight, and we'll begin the threading operation. This is the wood tap that we're going to thread this with, and it works just the same way as the other one. Um, a lot of wood taps don't come with a handle, so you'll need to improvise with a wrench or a clamp or create something that works. And I realized pretty quickly that uh, this takes a lot of force and that wasn't going to do it. So Maya grabbed this big beast of a clamp and she went ahead and tapped this herself. That's Kyle hiding off in the corner there. He's going to catch that tap as that comes down through there. We don't want that to fall down to the ground and maybe dent one of our sharpened edges on it. And that worked out pretty good. And we'll just give it a quick test and see how this thing goes together. Hey, that went on pretty nice. So now let's go ahead and do a quick comparison of the completed project here. We've got a quarter inch um, nut, uh, hex head nut and... Uh, bolt that I'm going to compare this to and we have ours which is a two and a half inch diameter so ours is ten times wider uh, ten times thicker and ten times longer so it actually has a thousand times the volume and it goes on flawlessly threads look great and there you have it thanks for watching